Right, so today I'm going to cut some fret slots. Now, R. Parker left a comment on the video about radiusing fretboards, and he said he would like to radius fretboards this way, but he said he always cuts his fret slots prior to sticking the fretboard on. Um, now, you can radius with a plane when the slots are already slotted. Uh, you just need a really sharp plane. Um, and not take much material. In fact, I think my first few guitars I built that way. Um, but I prefer to do it this way because there's a lot less soaring involved, basically. My fret wire has the tang depth is only about one and a half mil thick, deep rather. So by radiusing the fretboard first, I've only got a saw just over one and a half mil. Um, so there's a lot less material in terms of depth and there's a lot less material this way. And also I find when you um, do the slotting on a fretboard blank where it's a, I don't know, 6, 7 mil, 8 mil deep, um, unless you saw your fret slots really deep to start with, you have to come back and saw a radius into them anyway. So I find it's just easier to do it after it's been radiused. So the first thing I'm using is, this is a uh, Crimson Protractor or Incra Protractor. I think you can buy them from Crimson in the UK, but if you're in US or something, then um, Incra on uh, eBay or Amazon will have them. So I need to put the center line in. Come back and double check that my centre line's accurate. Cool. So the next tool I'm using, this is um, Crimson's four in one fret ruler. This is uh, a really good little fret ruler actually because you've got Strat, Gibson and PRS scales. Right, so I'm doing 25 inch scale. Anyway, this tool's great because it takes measuring out of the equation, which is probably the most likely thing that's going to screw up the fretboard is if you get the fret measurements wrong. Alright, so I'm literally just, the, the nut slot is on the very edge of the fretboard and then I'm just going to mark where the slots go. So now that I've marked where the fret slots are going to go, I now need to make a line. And I'm just using the protractor along the center line, which I can use to put a mark all the way across. I suppose in theory you can use any old protractor for this, but these are quite big. So you can see further down your centre line, which I think is going to increase accuracy. Um, and also they're thin metal protractors and they're quite flexible. So it means it bends over the 
radius of the fretboard quite nicely. I like these engineering pencils because you can get 0.5mm leads for them, which is about the width of a fret slot, so they're nice and accurate for drawing, but the leads don't half break easily, which is annoying. Cool. So now that I've marked where they're all going, I'm just going to come back and double check them. So start off in the middle, which is obviously in the middle is most likely to be correct. But then I'll check the edges as well and make sure that the lines I've drawn with the protractor are consistent with the lines that I've drawn for the uh, the marks in the middle. Cool, they look good to me. Now that I've marked out where they're going, I need to just mark the slots. Now I used to use a marking knife for this, um, and that once I'd marked out the slots with a pencil, I would then come back with a protractor and use the marking knife to give somewhere for the saw to start. But now that I have one of these, which is the uh, Crimson Razor Saw, which is just a really fine saw, it's um, like 0.3 mil or something, um, if that. I just use this now to start off my fret slots. Um, so I'll come through, saw through all the slots once with this one, and then I shall come back with my fret saw which I think is a chicken bone John fret saw which I got from eBay and then that'll do the uh, the slotting to the uh, the final depth but before I start sawing anything I'm just going to clamp down this end of the fretboard of the neck rather So I like to just clamp it down um, because if you're trying to hold the work you're putting less effort into sawing and concentrating on holding the work as much as you are sawing and that's where I find I'm most likely to go wrong. So I just clamp the end down there and that's not going anywhere. I mean the clamp might work loose but I'll just tighten it up and I tend to start at this end. Uh, basically the way I see it is the closer together the frets are, the more important accuracy is. And I think this is one thing that people worry about a lot when, when they're thinking about building necks is, you know, if the fret slots are in the wrong position, it's all going to be out of tune and be awful. But the reality is that if this slot here is, say, a fraction of a millimeter out, you're not going to notice it. Same with this one. This one is when you get up to this end that you need to be careful. Um, at this end, if you have tuning issues at this end, then that's a lot more likely to be down to the nut than the uh, the accuracy of these fret slots. So I start at this end because <clears throat> as you get into the swing of it, you just find it's it becomes easier. So I start at this end, gradually work my way down. Now, when I first saw the slot, I make one small. forwards pass like this into the um, in towards the middle and I do the same on the other side I come in towards the middle and that prevents any tear out coming out this way because this is now final dimensions I don't want the uh, the ends of the fret slots to blow out And then now that I've put those two notches in, I'm just going to join them up.
that's it. So I've made a a small slot there, and that will give my fret saw plenty to grab onto. So I'm just going to work up the fretboard like that. And as I, as I saw, I'm just kind of sawing in the radius as I go, which you kind of naturally do when you start at this end and start at this end and just join the two, the two lines up, which is what we want. Cool. So I've marked all my fret slots now. There's a sort of a, I guess, probably half mil deep slot in each one. Probably a good idea now to come back and do a quick measure. Yeah, pretty good to me. Now, at this point, if I did miss saw a slot and get it in the wrong place it wouldn't be much of a big deal to come back and just fill that with dust and glue and re-saw it um, you're never going to see it anyway underneath the uh, underneath the crown of the fret unless it's um, you know a million miles off which it won't be so I've got a bit of masking tape here which is uh, just above the uh, the depth of my fret tang so I'm just using that as a guide and I just want to make sure that everywhere along the radius of the slot is up to the tape and again I'm starting at this end just to uh, it's, it's a bit more accurate so exact same situation as the um, as the uh, the fine saw I'm just pushing in from this side and then in from the outside. I mean, it, this is a pull saw, but it doesn't matter. You can still saw in this direction. It's just not as effective. But I just really don't want to have tear out along the side of the fretboard because I would have to um, have to fill that in with something if that happened. Three to go. So that is uh, twenty four fret slotted. Um, now I don't know how well. It shows up on camera, but just here and in one other place where I just slipped ever so slightly when I was going with the uh, the extra fine saw. It's just grazed along here, um, but it's ever so it's ever such a slight graze. And when I because I've only um, I've only sanded this up to 80 grit when I was radiusing it, so. 
once I've got my inlays in, I'm going to come back with 80 grit again and get those flush. So that will just give that a skim and that will get rid of that. And then I'll probably sand up to, I don't know, 320, 400 grit, something like that. So this will be nice and silky smooth. And in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I made earlier. So these are both done now. So uh, in the next episode, which will be a short one, um, I shall drill the tuna holes, and then after that, we'll be on to inlays. God damn, I love